So what we do, we go to our code. Now, after our sign up is successful, we have to redirect to our login page. Now, if you look at the code from where we started the function, and the submit button, add event listener, you will see that we are listening to the click event. And it's using the click event, and we are passing the properties or, or the input values, password, name, email, password, name, phone number. We are passing them as the body parameter. That is the body parameter here in our request using the fetch API. I already told you guys that this fetch API helps us to make query to, to any backend or even to any backend from our front end application. And the, I've told you also the HTTP method, we have post, get, and uh, the rest put. Each of them are for specific use cases. And for post, it's usually used to send data to the backend, especially like to create and update data in the backend. And now the body of a post request is the data that you are sending. And that is where we added those uh, values we got from the uh, form. We have the email, the password, phone number. And something very important is this header section where we have to specify the accept, which is a JSON, and then the content types, the application JSON. And when we go down after the request, we use that sync and await here. You see, we are waiting for this. When there is the response from here, our request object will be created. And then in order to get our JSON response, like we are expecting JSON here, we are now going to await the request for JSON. Now here we can just console log the JSON. So we are not just going to console log the JSON here. Now the user has been created in the database before it gets to this point. But then something that we have to do is to take the person out of the login screen. And how we can do that is using the window location of the, this location contains the tools that help you to navigate your application in the front end. Now, when the href contains um, accept a link related kind of um, string, which the browser will use to move your app to the URL you specified there. And in this case, I'm going to specify HTTP local host. Our port is, uh, let's look at the port that our application is currently served. Or I think we can just say slash sign login.html. Login.html. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't, we just put the entire URL for the login. That is, we're going to copy something like this and then replace that. So let them try and create one. Let's use Chineduna. And then we are using um, the email. So at example.com and his phone number, just pick a random phone number and password. We are saying his password we want to three, four, five, six. Then we hit sign up. Out is being equal. Let's see, inspect our code in the, see the response we get. having connection refused. So let's see what happened. Oh, our backend is not currently running. 
So run dev, I think that is the code. Yes, it's already started now. So let's hit our submit button again. I'm going to clear the log here. And here we go. Yes, we are being redirected to our slash login, which doesn't exist. So we have an issue there. So we are going to So we'll try another one with this slash front end slash pages slash login. And that should be the correct uh, link. So we we'll create uh, with another email. Then let's another phone number too. And password we still use one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we hit the sign up button again. Oh my god, I'm, I didn't refresh this. Okay. Let's use the name of our site, goodymart, uh, our product.com. Then we'll try the password again. Then we'll hit submit. Yes, now we are in our login page. We have been redirected to login. Uh, sign up is successful. So what we have to do now is uh, test user one at to demand. Let's come one, two, three, four, five, six. But then we are going to implement the login action too. So what we are going to do now, we pick uh, the code from there. So pick this code, we remove the ones that we don't need. Okay. Just speaking the entire script section. So we'll go to the login page. Okay, we already have our script session, that is fine. All right, so remember in our backend, let's go to the backend again, the user controller. We implemented, um, so we start from the user route. Our login route is called slash login. It's a post request slash login. Now we'll come to the login page again. So it means we have slash user, user controller, then slash login. That is where we are putting our request to. Now in this case, we are only getting the email and password. We don't need phone number and name to login. Okay, so 
Now we have to confirm if we name them email and password. You see the ID is different, so this should be password. And then the ID of the email input should also be email. And that's all in that section. So we come here again, then we remove the name and pass and phone number. We don't need them. It's still a post request. All these other ones are still valid. Now, here should be something like a token we are getting here. And if everything is successful, we are going to the index.html. We are going back to our index.html. So let's try to do a login again. Now we are using a test user one at Rudimat.com. We have one, two, three, four, five, six as a password. Then hit enter. Okay, let's wait for response. It's saying connection refused. So let's see the error we are having. Our backend is breaking because of that. So what do we do? We are going to the backend to fix our code. We have our hash. This is where the code is breaking in line 27 in our user service. So we'll go to user service and see what is breaking our code in 27. Okay. In our user service, we're expecting rest. Let's see if we are sending rest in our user controller. The login we have, uh, we are not sending the rest. That is the issue here. So we put the, the response object attached to it. So we'll try again test user one at rudiments.com. password take this away yeah we see our login is successful and we have been redirected to our index page okay so something we are going to do apart from just redirecting to index we are going to do something differently now. See that we have been able to implement our login. Now I'm going to go back again to login, but then I want to remove the redirects. I will console log this redirect so that we'll be able to see login HTML. The test user one at Goodimat. That's gone. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have an error here invalid username or password. Yes, I didn't put the uh, username completely. Then what do we still have in value username or password? Hmm. Let's check our database if we even have the good math created.
these are the users we have this is the last one test user one okay the username i misspelled the username instead of k before t i put t before k so let's try again yeah now we have our token in our token what do we have we are sending um we're not really sending token we're sending the user We'll handle token issue later on. But what we are sending back now is the detail of the user. Now you can see we are having the username or email. We are going to modify this function so that we can remove the password. But then before we do that, we are going to handle the JWT related work. So Okay, let's just work with this for the moment and save uh, the username. So, if um, this thing, if not Jason dot message, if Jason dot message, it means it it, it does it didn't succeed. Otherwise. We are coming to do something like um, let's first just use a lot and we put the message here is um, JSON dot message. But if there is no JSON dot message, we can do now is uh, local storage. This is a storage in the browser, a kind of mini database in the browser, and we are setting item. The item we are setting in quality user. And the value we are going to set there is the JSON. It's the JSON. Alternatively, we can call this user because we know that it's a user data we are sending now. But then let's just leave it at the way it is now. So here we are able to save our user to the storage in the browser. Now let's go back to our back end. Because we do not want the password and all those to be returned, we can what we can do at this point is to delete delete user dot password before we return the data to the front end. So let's try again now. You will see our result should be a bit different. So we have. Let's use a one and we have the password. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me clear this and I hit login. Okay. Now, if you look at the token, the user data will come, will bring here. Password deleting is not, uh, let's see what is happening. Why didn't it work? In user service, delete. User.password. Let's log this again. You had network issue before? Yes, sir. I had a network issue. Okay. Let me pick the username again. Try our login.
Let me leave this at the moment. I can't figure out why the delete is not able to remove this. Alternatively, let's see. Setting it to not if it will work, I'm not sure. Instead, we set it to an empty string. All right, let's move back to the next important thing in the front end session now. If you look at, you have a session in the browser called application. That is where you can see the local storage. So if you click on the application, you will see the data which saved in the local storage. So because we are saving it, if we are saving an object, that is why you see an object object. Then what we can do is to save a, a strangified uh, JSON. So we can say JSON dot um, strangified. Now this we are going to, is going to convert that object to a string and save it. Let's try again. Then we'll hit this. So you now you can see that our data is showing the way it's supposed and our password have not been re replaced with uh, the empty string. Okay. So now our password is not exposed to the front end app. We need our email, we need the name, phone number possibly, especially the name. So what we will do subsequently is to update the uh, header of our index and every other place. So this is now we can leave our application to go to the login, uh, to the index page at this moment, because we know we have gotten what we are looking for in the login. So let's go to the index. Now we want to manipulate the Let's uh, look at the index page first. Now this account, we want to manipulate it and replace this value account, you know, with the name of the person. So what do we do? Let's start where we have account here, account. So this ID, uh, We can we, let's pick this. So we can come to the last part of the body of our application. I think we are using the product. Uh, the, we are using the product to do that. So we can also let's write the function here first. We say document get element by ID and the ID is this you can say const account btn equals now we say const user is equals you know, because we did JSON.stringify, we need to do JSON.pass when we are fet fetching the data from local storage so that it will become an object too. But now we have local storage or get item, we are getting user, right? That is what we call it. If you come to the browser and you go to the application, you see that this object is called user. This is the key, the user. So we are fetching the user, that is what we call it. Now this moment, after we got the user, we can then say btn dot inner html. If we would like, we can then say this um, let's say we have a span there. And then the class You can add a class where you are putting a in a HTML. So we can say this is a 
let's say font weight of 400. We close the span. So in between here now we can uh, user dot dot name so that the name of the user will display there. So let's go go back into our application. If everything works. Okay, let's see. Let's log our user here. See what we get. So user. So we go back to the console. Saying you cannot set property of not certain inner HTML. Don't we have this? Okay, okay, okay. This is not the one. Oh my god. I'm supposed to do it on. Let's see what this is this, then this is this, this is this, uh -huh. this is the button, that's where I'm supposed to do that. I see why our BTN is saying that there is nothing like this. Uh, BTN is no, but we are having our user. This is fine. So how do I access this button? Uh, because it's a list. Let's see what do we do about this.
we use another group here. Types. Uh, I'm not using TypeScript feature here. Okay, let's try again. Our BTN is still now. This is serious. Can't get this. Okay, so we've gotten our solution. I just to change, uh, bring it down to the awaits uh, uh, after the function call. All right, so if you can see now, uh, the name of the person is showing in our button, which we have been able to achieve. It's just like um, when you log in on the site, you see your name or email appearing in this section. So we've been able to update this session and reflect the name of the person that we have saved in the local storage. Yes, so far, I don't know if you have any question. I can't hear you clearly. I guess your speaker is not... Um... <laughs> Okay. So what I want to do in the index, I think um, I want to try just making this span, not a D, not a button. Want to see how they look? Okay, this is looking different. Now let's try the other ones. I don't want you to have that button look. We'll start this separately later on so we can have something different. Chinedu, where have you been? Chinedu. So we are linking to our login from here, from the login. So we put slash pages and slash login the HTML. Our help, we are not implementing anything there for now. So if we click on our login, it's taking us to the login page. That's what we want. Then if someone is already logging, we can change this now to, we can remove this from the list.
Antes. Okay, I'm looking for this bot. Okay, okay, they are still having the the classes beating like this one is still having beating. Let's see if we get rid of this. Then we get rid of this too. We get rid of this. Okay. So I can give them good margins now. So I can say this is M4. This is M4. Uh, this can also have M4. And then the account for the class. Yeah, let's also say M4. And then uh, we have a class called test uh, info. Let's use um, test light so that the test should be wide, including in this place. Let's say test light. Then this one too, test light. Yeah, and test light. So let's see how it goes. Yeah. So this is what we have. We are now able. We have been able to change uh, the look of uh, this button. Let's see. We need to make changes there. The account. So what do we do to make it look differently? We don't need this M4 here. Where we need it is on the top level here. So let's try again and see what we get. Yeah, I guess our site is looking better now. Yes, very well written. Okay. Yes, but uh, what you say that you do something that after logging in that you will not see login again in the menu. Over. Yeah, we we'll do that. That is uh, another responsibility. And uh, this, yes. I don't know where it's coming from. So let me trace after the help. So let's look after help. What do we have? We have this. And what else? Mm, nothing. So it's bringing that space to what I don't know now. So what we can do here after when we, we can give this an ID of uh, login BTN. Let's, let's space it, login BTN. So what we do now in our script in the JS section, if user, if there is user, so we can then document or get element by ID. I'll call it a login ETN dot uh, we cannot say hidden, but hidden. Okay, if we do this, you are not going to see it. I think I'm making a mistake here. It should be hidden true. We are trying the value of true here. Otherwise, we can let's see how it goes. We have to use a uh, display now. Yeah, this is hiding it, so we see that. It's not showing, but then let's go back. I think I added it, it in a different place, in the wrong place. Login between is just this. 
Oh my, so this should be slash A. I think every other thing is it's like they are being wrapped inside it. So let's go back again. As I know, every other thing after it was insured. So you see that we don't have the login again. So instead, what we have here inside this, we will not have logout inside this. We will not have logout. So what do we do? We go back again to where we have saved items. We we'll put a list. And we can call this logout. So instead of a link here, we can have a button. Have a button. And then the class we can ETN, ETN light. I think that will be fine. Then we'll call this, we'll give it an ID of logout. So let's look at how what we have now. So in the account, uh, in the test user, you now see logger. So when we click on this logger, we just the actual we just want to achieve is to destroy the user object and redirect the person again to the index. So what do we do? We can implement the function immediately by just coming. See here we say document element by ID, get element by ID, call it a log out, is it uh, BTN? I don't know. Dot add event listener. We are listening to click event. So what we do here, EVT the event, just say local storage dot clear we are clearing everything in the local storage then we are window dot do we have this function if i'm not mistaken window dot location i think we have reload let's see oh oh uh, windows dot location Oh, 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 location first. Window dot location. I'm not typing location. Dot reload. So we are reloading the page again. Oh, let's um because we might not be in dot href equals slash front end slash page is slash in this dot html so let's look at the rename of the button the re id so where do we get that just log out so let me go back here and remove the btn we go back again now to our page and hit log out Okay, you see our login is now appearing now because we have logged that there is no user in the system. I guess this is where we stop today. We move on again tomorrow as God help us. So what you guys can do, spend some time and then see what you can do in practicing what we are doing. If you have any question you can ask before we close. Yes, I have a question, sir. Please, sir, my, is, those links, I have not been seeing any link to, sorry, was it, is it link or video? Like today's video now. Where, where in the Telegram will I go and see it? I see where to, how to download just it. Just go to YouTube. Yeah. I, I don't post this in Telegram. Just go to YouTube. What you do, you go to that uh, stand up channel, the, just visit any of the old video, then subscribe to the channel so that when I post new video, you you will just uh, receive a notification in your uh, YouTube there. So you will know. Okay. I think that's what Destiny is doing. If I post it now, within a minute, Destiny will know that I posted a new video. Okay, okay, okay. There are no problems, sir. Thank you. Okay. So let's uh, move on. We have a nice day till we meet again tomorrow. Hopefully. Thank you, sir. Please.